Hope you're doing well this evening. I was um, thinking about um, Genesis 38. And if you guys don't know, that that's smack dab. Well, it's the second chapter of where the Joseph story should be. Uh, Genesis 37 to Genesis 50 is the Joseph story. This beautiful story about a dreamer and the brothers and the coat of many colors and how he rises to power uh, through God and through uh, being able to tell prophetic dreams and how he begins to, how he in the end helps the people that that got him into trouble in the first place. It's a lot of drama. It's a beautiful story. But I'm not here to talk about the Joseph story today. Um, in the middle, not the middle, but the second... Okay, let's start here. Um, you would think Genesis 37 to 50 would go straight through to the story at least make some sense. Uh, but no, there is a chapter, there's Genesis, there's the first chapter of the Joseph story, which is Genesis 37, which takes you up until, uh, talks a bit about Jacob's background, and talks a bit about how Joseph's brothers hated him, and it, it goes to the point where um, Joseph bro Joseph's brothers sold him and then told his father Jacob um, that he was dead and he and they brought him uh, the blood of a pig. But then <laughs> this is what I wanted to talk about. But then there's this weird story about um, um, Tamar and how she sleeps with her father-in-law and then gets pregnant with twins and then it goes back to the Joseph story and then we never hear about that other story again. So it's it's like... You're watching this beautiful Christian movie, and in the middle of this movie, uh, a condom commercial comes on, you're like, what? Like, this doesn't make sense. And I'm calling this sermon, uh, weirdly, Genesis 38, uh, which means the people who don't fit the people who are a little odd and like you're a little like you're a little off the beaten path and uh, people really don't understand you you really don't fit there is this um, let's say everybody in your family is very straight laced and uh, very uh, put together but somehow you seem to not fit and you've been trying to fit all your life and you just don't fit and then I'm here to talk to you today and I'm saying uh, there's a place for you and you weren't designed to fit you were designed to stand up you weren't designed to go in this straight line. You weren't designed to be Genesis 39, which is the story continuation. And it goes from 39 to 50 without stopping. There are no weird commercial breaks or whatever. But you were designed to be Genesis 38 to kind of stick out uh, like a sore thumb in a good way 
and God is calling now uh, the people that stick out, the people that don't fit. He's saying he sees you. He not only sees you, but he's going to use you in a wonderful way. There's, there's, um, there's a reason why you stick out in your family. There's a reason why everybody's loud in your family and you're kind of quiet. And there's a reason why everybody's quiet in your family and you have a boisterous personality and you love Jesus. And you're wondering, is anything wrong with me? No, nothing's wrong with you. you the, the thing is, you're designed to stand out. You're designed to um, not go with the crowd. And yes, everybody's different in their own little ways. And everybody's designed to stand out in their own little ways. But I'm talking to people who's, who never felt really like they belong or never felt like they fit in. Um, it's... And I'm here to tell you that God has a place for you. And he is just waiting for you to, uh, stop, to try, stop trying to fit in and accept your crazy self and be, be proud that you're Genesis 38. Be proud that you don't fit in. Be proud because God's going to use that. And... In your circumstances, you may be having uh, dreams, you may be having all these weird things happen, and you're like, why doesn't this happen? Why does this happen to me? Well, it's because you're designed to stand out. You're designed to be... You're designed to be special. You're designed to go against the grain, go against the, the norm. I I was listening to um, uh, Chandler Moore, who is a worship leader. Uh, he's one of the uh, singers in Maverick City, an amazing worship leader. And he said, I've always been a maverick. I've always gone against the grain. I've always... Um, been a non-planner. I've always been been kind of uh, um, I've kind of uh, patterned my life to my own beat. I've kind of moved to my own beat. And I'm talking to all the Genesis 38ers uh, the G38s that don't fall in line, that you just kind of are like a little weird and a little, a little kind of, you go against the grain. And I'm telling you that God's going to use that for his glory. Um, and there's a reason why people don't understand you. There's a reason why uh, people keep leaving you, you're like, why do, does everybody else have, have a mentor, why does everybody else have lots of friends, but every time I try, it doesn't seem to work out for me, because you were designed to be different, you were designed, I'm talking to, to a trailblazer, all the G G38ers are trailblazers you are designed to carve a path that will change your generation you are designed to speak to nations you are designed to change the world you were designed to stick out in in the most wonderful way possible so stop trying to fit in Stop trying to dress like your friends. Stop trying to be, um, to be like everyone else. Because you weren't called to be like everybody else. You were called to be a G38er. So somebody who, 
who sticks out from the grain. Somebody, when people look at you, they're like, huh? But when they get close to you, they're like, wow, this person is talented. And wow, this person really has got something to offer. But I know, I know, um, behind all your bravado and all your confidence, I know you go home and cry because you're wondering why don't you, why, why when you try to make friends it doesn't work out, why when you try and join those Bible study groups online, do you feel like you're so against the grain? So, some of you, like me, feel you're too Christian for the world and too worldly for the church and you're not sure where you fit. I've been there myself and I'm there now and I've I've come to the conclusion that everything is is working together for my good. The reason you sometimes feel that way is that you're designed to to blaze trails that nobody's ever blazed before. You were designed to do things that no one's ever done before. The reason when you when you watch something, the reason why you're thinking out of the grain is because you were meant to go into that world and change it. You were meant to go into that world and turn it upside down. Jesus was a total G38er. Um, Jesus came came in to the world at a time where everyone everything was linear they were looking for the messiah and everything was so um was so put together but there was a lack of love and a lack of uh forgiveness and a lack of understanding for people you you either obeyed the law or you didn't and Jesus came to to be a Jenny, uh, to be a, a G thirty eight or to interrupt the norm to to turn the world on its head. And us G thirty eighters are kind of we're designed to turn the world upside down, and we know it. We know it. We can feel it. We we can feel it the way we express ourselves when, when we look at things, when we watch some things, when we watch sermons or when we watch other things that we're good at. We're good at. We see things that other people don't see because we are designed to be world changers. We are we are designed to affect the world and. And uh, we are designed to turn the world upside down. And everybody in their own way is designed to do that. Some people in a big way and some people in a little way. So don't be afraid to be a G38er in your life. Don't be afraid to be a person that goes against the grain. Don't be afraid to think and see and do what is in your heart to do. And you you may feel strange because, oh my gosh, this is not right. But something's pulling you to that. And you try to fight it, but you can't because God has called you to that. God has called you to be extraordinary. There are too many people trying to be ordinary when they're called to be extraordinary. And God's called you to be a G38er, which means to disrupt the norm, to disrupt the story. There are people right now that God's called to be G38ers for their family. No, but no one in your family went to college. Uh, no one 
and your family did anything of note, but you feel in your spirit that you're meant to. Everyone in your family got pregnant young. Everyone in your family had babies in, um, in wedlock. No, out of, sorry, out, out of wedlock. And everyone in your family got divorced. But you are called to do something greater. You are called to do something richer. You are called to to do something right. Why? Why you are called to be more? And I would argue that everybody has a a G twenty eight moment in your life where you can either go back to. Uh, Genesis 37, or continue on with the story to Genesis 39. So, are you going to be, are you, or you can stick out in the best way, like a G38 or should. You were designed to stand out. You were designed to do great things. The reason why you feel so strange, the reason why you don't fit in to that group or to that Bible study or to that uh, church thing is you were designed to be something more. And the reason why you feel so uncomfortable is God is creating in you a righteous discomfort. A righteous discomfort because he wants you to be more than you, you have ever dreamed. He has so many dreams for you, g 38 -er. He wants you to interrupt the norm. I think... Um, the Lord had me going down this rabbit hole, uh, and I started watching um, Susan Boyle, which was the Britain's Got Talent winner a few years ago. She was this 47-year-old woman. She had she was wearing a dress that was not too well. It it was um, not too nice. It was old or whatever. She had hair that st uh, was sticking up, and she had, it was really curly and kind of a mess. But when she opened up her mouth, it was like the whole world stopped and paid attention. Her voice was so amazing. She shook the whole room with her voice. And that's what what it is with G38ers. You don't look like who you are from the outside. But when people get to know what and who is re really inside of you, they're amazed. Don't worry, baby. Don't give up. You're a G38 or you're, uh, you're designed to stick out from the, from the norm. You are designed to disrupt the story. Disrupt the story of your family. Disrupt the story of your life. You are designed to be greater than you than you have ever dreamed. You are designed to be God's handiwork in such an explosive way. You are designed to turn the tables on a generation, on a society. That's what Jesus did. He turned the tables. He turned everything upside down. We often think of Jesus as this uh, um person that was, uh, like, lo love your neighbor as yourself, and, and we just said these beautiful sayings, which he did. But even the concept 
of loving your neighbor as yourself at that time was so radical. He was literally and figuratively the biggest hellraiser of the time. Jesus was, um, he just turned everything upside down. Everything that the teachers did, he didn't do. You, ne I never saw Jesus teaching in the synagogue from the Torah. He always mixed with the people. He always was going against the grain. He was a big G38er. He interrupted the story and he changed the narrative. And that's what G G38ers are meant to meant to be. We are not just meant to interrupt the story. We are meant to change the narrative. My question and God's question to you today is what narrative are you meant to change? What chain are you meant to break? What 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 world what what world are you meant to turn upside down? When I what I when I mean world I mean industry. What what industry are you meant to bring new ideas, new thought? There are people out there that are thinking things that are so monumentally life changing, but they're afraid to be G thirty eighters. And the Lord would say, G thirty eighters, people that interrupt the story, arise and come forth. G thirty eighters, go for it. The Lord has been speaking to you and ministering to you and giving you these monumental ideas. And he said, I've given you the solutions. I've, give, I've given you solutions to some of you, the world's problems. I've given you solutions to your family problems. I've given you solutions to change industries and to, tra to change marketplaces and to change the world. He said, I need you to stop being afraid. I need you to to um, come out of the dark and know that I will be with you. And no, being a G28er is not easy. Going against the grain is not easy. It is the hardest thing ever to go against the grain to what your friends are doing. Some of you are in high school and you are trying to fit in but there's something in you that is calling you higher. Go higher. Think deeper. Think, um, go wider than you ever thought you could go. And I know it's lonely, but God's got you, got your back. And then when it's time, He will send the right people that are also G28ers and see your vision and can partner with you. Can partner with you in interrupting the story. You weren't designed to be normal. You were designed to be a G twenty eight or which is G thirty eight or sorry. G thirty eight or um which is a person who interrupts the story, interrupts the narrative flips it on its side, flips it on its head, does things that other people won't think of doing. When you're watching something and other people are getting this out of it, you, you are seeing a whole different thing and you're like, why can't I just simply get this out of it like other people? Like, for, for me sometimes, when I'm watching a movie, I'm thinking, because I love movies, and not only love movies, but I, I'm called to be um, a, a entrepreneur of a movie company. I'm seeing all these things, like different plots, and different ways they could have directed, and 
I'm seeing storylines that they could have acted. And sometimes, too, the other side of me, when I'm watching a sermon, I, I would be like, oh my gosh, he or he or she could have done that to illustrate that better. I'm seeing things that other people are not seeing because I'm called to those two industries. The reason you see the things that other people don't see is because God has called you to, a, to greatness. And that could be greatness as a mom, it could be greatness as a student, it could be greatness as wh wherever you are. God's called you to be a G28 or to, to interrupt the story, to go against the grain, to go, go against the norm. And the Lord wants me to say today to you, He hasn't called you to be normal. He hasn't called you to be normal. He hasn't called you to be normal. He's called you to be extra, extraordinary. And you are extraordinary because He has made you. So be a G28er. And some of you are G28ers and you're hiding your light. The Lord said, come out from the darkness into the light. The world doesn't need you to hide. The world needs you to shine brighter than you've ever shined before. This world is so full of darkness. They need your light. They don't need you to fit in. They need you to stand out. They need you to be a G28er. They need you to stand out because when you stand out, you represent him because Jesus, um, when he was on earth, he stood out. His teachings were so radical um, because before Jesus, they only had the law and he didn't come to abolish the law he came to fulfill the law you didn't come to uh, um, break the rules in a bad way you came to break them so that the newness of life can flow to people's spirits. There is life in you. There is life in you. That's why it's so hard for you, G28ers. There is life in you. There is life in you. You cannot die here. You cannot hide your light under a bushel. So, under a bush, under a bushel, so it can be trampled under feet. I want, I want, the Lord wants lights to shine so bright so that people have no choice but to follow it. Like, when you shine the light of God into whatever industry, when you interrupt the story, the Lord uh, uses that to shine so bright. And, you know, light like, like that, that trying to break, it's like a magnet. It's like a magnet. It draws people to you. And those that it draws away from you, don't worry about that. They can't, if they can't handle your light, that's their problem. That's not yours. And I know it's lonely, but... But honey, it's going to be worth it. Be a G28 or stand out and be proud of that. Thank you guys so much. Bye. This little I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. 
this land of mine and fly. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Bye, guys. See you later. Be a G28er and be proud of it. Be proud to interrupt the story. Be proud of the visions and, and the insights that God has given you. He's given you that passion and that insight and that personality for a reason. Don't hide it thinking that Oh, you have to dumb down your light to make other people feel better. You don't. You just have to be you and be proud of being you. Be proud of standing up. Be proud of interrupting the narrative. Be proud of interrupting the normal. Thanks, guys, so much.